Today we're going to talk about how to make bread mixes. Now the reason I make bread mixes is because, in case you hadn't noticed, baking bread can sometimes be an all-day project if you let it be. But with a few simple shortcuts, you can make it a lot faster and a lot easier on you. One of the ways that we do this is by making up bread mix ahead of time. That way we have our dry ingredients in a container on hand ready to go lickety split. I usually make up about four or five containers of this bread mix at once on the theory of, well, it's just as easy to measure out a cup of flour once as it is to measure it out five times. So there you have it. The ingredients that we're going to be working with today are as follows. One and a half cups of whole wheat flour. And um, I generally like to go with a very high quality whole wheat flour. I, I know you're probably on a budget and I am too, but um, the best whole wheat flour that you can buy would, would be good. Um, three and a half cups of bread flour. Again, you want to get a good brand. Of, of flour because it does make a difference. There's differences in the, the protein and lots of other ingredient issues that actually do make a difference in your bread. But you know, quite honestly, if all you have and all you can find is white flour, use the white flour. Use what you've got on hand. It, it won't hurt it. It just won't be as good. Next, we're going to add a quarter cup of brown sugar, two and a half teaspoons of salt, now, to be honest with you, I actually prefer more of a tablespoon of salt for this loaf of bread because I like it just a little bit more on the salty side, but you might want to start with two and a half teaspoons and adjust from there. Next, a quarter cup of sesame seeds, and, ne and then last, a third of a cup of wheat germ. Now, you, some people like to toast the wheat germ and the sesame seeds. It adds a little more flavor. Personally, I don't, but... Um, you know, if you want to, that's great. Now, to this mix, you're going to add one tablespoon of instant yeast. I use the SAF brand of instant yeast, and um, sometimes you might have to hunt for it. It's really worth the extra effort because you can just throw it right in with the, the uh, flowers in the mix. You don't have to, you know, proof it or do anything extra fussy with it. If you didn't have this instant yeast, Fine, just use your regular yeast that you buy at the supermarket, but you'll want to proof it with some um, uh, liquid first. Just follow the directions and, and go ahead and just use one tablespoon or one package um, if that's the case. Now, the other ingredient that I like to use with my bread mix is I like to add two tablespoons of wheat gluten in. Now, the only wheat gluten that I have available to me is Bob's Red Mill. You buy it in the baking section. Again, you might have to hunt this down. What this does is it, it helps the, the mix be a lot lighter. I, I prefer my breads to be light and fluffy uh, rather than, than real heavy. Again, though, if you don't have it, don't worry about a thing. Um, just go ahead and just go with the ingredients without the wheat gluten, and it'll be just fine. All right, now if you're ready, let's go ahead and start measuring out the ingredients. The one nice thing about this recipe is you don't have to be all that fussy about measuring out your flour because you're going to be adding flour again when we go to mix it in together. Flour is one of those things that it's kind of hard to measure the exact amount every time when you're baking bread because it's going to vary every time you bake your bread. The humidity in the air is going to be different. The temperature is going to be different. Each batch of flour is going to be different. So the thing about the mix is it gets everything together, gets you ready, and then we'll adjust the amount of flour that we need as we go along. So, first we'll measure out one and a half cups of our whole wheat flour. Okay, that looks good. Now we're going to measure out three and a half cups of our bread flour. See, I'm just leveling it off, just so I know I'm getting about the right amount. Three and a half cups. Two. Three. And a half cups. Okay, so that's 
That's it for the flour. Now we're going to measure up a quarter of a cup of brown sugar. And one of the things that I usually do ahead of time is I go through and I make sure that my brown sugar is not all clumpy or anything because that makes it a little harder to dissolve. This looks good. So a quarter of a cup of your brown sugar. All right. Now we're going to measure out two and a half teaspoons of salt. Again, like I said, if I'm making this bread for myself, I generally put more like a, a one teaspoon in. But you might want to start with the lesser amount until you feel comfortable with the recipe. Okay. Two and a half teaspoons of salt. A quarter of a cup of sesame seeds. I get these unholed brown sesame seeds at uh, the bulk food market, but you can buy them in the supermarket too. You just might want to keep an eye out for them. All right. And a third of a cup of wheat germ. This bread is very healthy for you in case you didn't notice. Okay, very good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the yeast. Okay, so what you want is you want a tablespoon of yeast. And again, this is the SAS Instant Yeast. You can find this at some supermarkets. I think I found this at Whole Foods. Um, it's one of those things that you might have to search out, but it's well worth the effort. Okay. The next thing you want is you want your vital wheat gluten. Again, I said I use Bob's Red Mill because that's the only one that I know about. And we're going to measure out about two tablespoons into the mix. And there you have it. You don't even have to mix it up because when you pour it in the bowl, it's going to get mixed for you. This is what one of my finished containers looks like. I recycled some containers, some plastic containers. I put the lid on. And these will keep, um, well, boy, I use them up pretty quick. Um, during the summer, they're not going to keep as long. So I would say don't make any more up than you're probably going to use in about a month because you know, the flowers don't keep forever. They'll get rancid. Your yeast won't keep forever outside the refrigerator. So pretty much limit yourself to within a month and you should be just fine. Okay, on to the next step.